Our keynote speaker today is Evelyn Husband Thompson. Evelyn is the widow of Rick Husband, commander of Columbia STS-107. Evelyn has written an inspirational book about the courageous life and faith of Rick entitled High Calling. She is also an active member of the space community and a real pleasure for all of us who have had the opportunity to know her. It's a pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker today, Evelyn Husband Thompson. Good morning. I'm amazed it's been five years. This is the first time that we've been back to Florida on the anniversary of the Columbia tragedy. This morning, just like we did that morning, we got up and watched the sunrise today, and it was just as beautiful as I remember five years ago. This morning, I couldn't stop thinking about Rick and Willie and Colton and Dave and Mike and Laurel and Elon. All of our families went through so much that day. We so miss them, and we will never forget them. And I can't thank each of you enough for being here to honor their memory and their contribution to our nation today. This morning, I want to share with you my experience five years ago and my children. As I told you, it was a beautiful morning. We got up before sunrise, which is highly unusual in the husband household, and watched the beautiful sunrise as we prepared to drive here to Kennedy Space Center to watch the landing. Rick had a very profound belief in God and was very committed to us as a family and to his children, Laura Matthew, and in his spare time, which I say totally sarcastic, as he prepared for his mission, he prepared devotional tapes for Laura and for Matthew so that each day while he was in space they could have time with him. So each morning while Rick was in space, those 16 days, Laura would watch her videotape from Rick and Matthew would watch his. And it was about five minutes in length and in that Rick would read a Bible verse, leave a little story in their devotional book, and say a prayer with them. And then would always have a few personal comments at the end and just tell them how much he loved them and how proud he was to be their dad. On the morning of February 1st, 2003, Laura and Matthew watched their final video in our hotel room here in Cocoa Beach. In that, Rick told them if the weather was good, that they would be landing in a few hours and we would all be reunited as a family. And in that video, he again told them how much he loved them, how proud he was of them, and how important it was to him that they had a relationship with the Lord. As we all know now, that reconciliation time together was not to be. But it will be someday, because we have a belief in Jesus Christ, and we know that we'll be reunited together in heaven. But for now, we must carry on in this life, and it hasn't been easy. That morning, we went out to the landing strip, anticipating their return. And we all stood there, waiting and listening to the communication between Rick, primarily, and Mission Control. And when I lost contact, I was unaware of it at the time because I was too busy talking, which was good, and was unaware that things were starting to go bad. About a minute out, I remember standing there with Steve Lindsay, who was one of our family escorts and also a very dear friend, and asking him which direction was the shuttle coming from and, and when were we going to hear the sonic boom. But there was no sonic boom, only silence. And then we watched the clock count down to zero. And then the most sickening thing, watching the numbers become positive numbers. At that moment, life began to go in slow motion for me. And I remember Laura grabbing my arm and asking me if her daddy was okay. She was 12. Matthew didn't say a word. He just took my hand. And I remember looking up at this beautiful Florida sky and realizing that life's, Rick's life was probably over, but not knowing what had happened. And I told Laura and Matthew, I said, we're going to have to go back to crew quarters. They'll tell us as quickly as they can. And so we were rushed out. 
and what seemed like an eternity, we waited for official word that the crew had been lost. Even at 12, Laura made the comment to me, I know God's going to take care of us. And I did too, but I had no idea how. One of Rick's favorite Bible verses that he put on all of his NASA pictures that he signed was Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. I can assure you that morning, and even today in some parts, I don't understand why the crew lost their lives, and yet I have trusted the Lord. He has given us peace that has passed all understanding, and he has directed our paths. On behalf of all of the Columbia families, I want to thank you for your support these last five years. NASA has stood by our side through thick and thin, has supported us, made us feel very loved, made us feel very much a part of the NASA family, and for that I am extremely grateful. All of them send their love today. Rona and Rona Ramon and Lonnie McCool are in Israel today commemorating the fifth anniversary of the Columbia tragedy. Each of us, publicly and privately, remember what we went through. Tributes around the nation are taking place today to honor them. Rick got his master's degree at, at Fresno State. And today the Air Force ROTC is doing a memorial service and laying a wreath at that. And I asked the president of Fresno State and the vice president of University Advancement to come today. And I appreciate Dr. Welty and Dr. Smith being here with us today. Dave Brown's parents will privately go to Arlington today and lay flowers at the three grave sites of the crew that are buried there, Dave, Laurel, and Mike. Last fall, in October, Bill and Matthew and I flew to Florida to observe a launch. And privately, Bill and I came to the space mirror, and for about 30 minutes I sat in a bench over here. Nobody had a clue who I was, which works well for me. And I was able to weep and grieve quietly and privately because I still grieve the loss of, of my precious husband. But in Psalm 147.3, it promises that God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. What a blessing to know that there is healing even in the midst of absolute pain. So I just want to thank everybody here today especially my precious children, Laura and Matthew, who have weathered so many storms, have shown so much grace under a lot of scrutiny. You haven't lived until you try to keep a 12-year-old and a 7-year-old happy in the public eye. And yet they have been amazing in everything they've had to face. There's a poem. The title of it is, My Soul Must Seek to carry on, and it's written by a man named Kevin Hartnett. My soul must seek to carry on, though pressing sorrows fill the day. The finish line is yet beyond the trouble standing in the way. His word has not the slightest changed. Fresh mercies flower each new day. My soul must seek to carry on, and not before this trial gives way. My soul must seek to carry on. The truth requires I hold her fast. Tis not my strength that readies me, but his provision, first to last. A mighty mandate rules in life for those who love and call are sure. He works together all for good. My soul has reason to endure. My soul has cause to carry on. The precious brethren cheer my way. And in the grace of fellowship, I find my burdens borne away. What grand design holds me in place as members fitly each supply? My soul has cause to carry on. They carry me as them do I. My soul is fit to carry on. A wondrous wardrobe aids me there. As arms and heart reach heavenward, a cloak of praise replaces care. Strong armor clothes me head to toe. I may be equipped in heaven's might. My soul is fit to carry on, to war in prayer, and stand for right. 
My soul delights to carry on. His blessed spirit beckons me. That still small voice conveys a force of confident security. The Prince of Promise leads me on. A life of fruitful labor, mine. My soul delights to carry on. Its joy renewed. Its glory thine. May God bless all of you, and thank you for being here today. Thank you.